so today we're very happy to have uh, Hong Liu from MIT to tell us about uh, emergence of space and time in holography. Okay, yeah, so it's a great pleasure to be back uh, at MIU. Um, yeah, so we'll talk about some more work I did with uh, during the last uh, couple of years with uh, Sam Lloyd Hauser. Uh, who is uh, at Princeton? Um, so, um, so in classical gravity, we are familiar with the concept such as a space-time local structure, local space-time regions, and the different notions of times, etc. And has not been speculated. Okay, maybe even as early as the nineteen fifties. People have speculated actually such kind of such geometric notions are not only the phenomena say, of quantum gravity, are emerging only in the distribution goes to zero limit. And uh, many years development of spin theory also give uh, um, uh, a support uh, uh, to this uh, uh, yeah uh, to, uh, to this notion. And then of course the question is how. And then what, say, if space-time or, or geometric notions are really emergent uh, at low energies, then what are the physical and the mathematical structures uh, underlying such emergence? And uh, right now we don't really have, uh, say, a uh, um, non-perturbative formulation of quantum gravity, so it's not easy to answer this question directly. But we do have the ADSFT duality, which uh, equates say, a long perturbative formulation of gravity, uh, quantum gravity to a field theory uh, uh, say, uh, on its boundary. So we should be able to uh, answer these questions in the context of the ADSFT duality. So, so, so here is a quick, very quick uh, reminder of the main ideas of the ADSFT duality is that you start, so if you, uh, so this is the statement that the uh, quantum gravity in magnetic field of space time is equivalent to a conformal field theory on its boundary. Okay. And uh, so on the gravity side, the key quantity is G Newton. Okay. And uh, so when you take the G Newton codes, uh, and the, uh, this is mapped to the one over N. In the boundary CFT, so, so n is a parameter which characterizes the number of degrees freedom in your uh, 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 in this uh, quantum field theory. And in particular, the semi-classical limit on the gravity side, uh, which we expect the geometry to emerge, say uh, corresponding to G Newton goes to zero limit. So here we always keep the h bar to be uh, to be finite. Okay. So so when you take G Newton goes to zero limit, uh, keep h bar to be finite. And then you recover, say, a quantum field theory in code space time. And so this is mapped to the n to infinity limit, uh, uh, a limit of your boundary CFT. Uh, so essentially, you have infinite number of degrees freedom. And uh, also, the, uh, I think that this is the equivalent between two quantum systems. So there's one to one correspondence uh, between the quantum state on two sides. So on the gravity side, we expect. Say if you take a general uh, uh, yeah if you take certain quantum states, and the certain quantum state may have well defined semi classical limit when you take G Newton goes to zero, and then that's what gives you the uh, classical geometry. So the classical geometry uh, can be considered as a, a classical limit of a quantum state. And then, as I said, uh, we don't really have a say right, uh, right now we don't have an independent way to describe this quantum state uh, on the full quantum gravitational side. But here, but in principle, we have control of this state on the CFT side. So we can ask this question from the other side, since uh, this should be one to one correspondence, and this goes to the classical geometry, we can ask if we take a state which has a semi classical limit, and how does the geometry say arises in this angle to infinity limit? Okay, so, so when you take the number of degrees freedom goes to infinity, how does the various geometric notion uh, arises uh, 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 in this limit? 
And so we want to understand, yeah, so this is the key we want to understand. And so we want to understand that the, um, oh, I'm missing one sentence. Okay, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, we want to understand the mathematical uh, uh, and the physical structure uh, behind this emergence okay, uh, from, the, from the CFC side. So one of the uh, simplest example also already uh, 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 shows sharply uh, the puzzle. Uh, uh, this is, is this example of the, uh, uh, um, the duality between the um, yeah yeah somehow that screen is there in the sheet. Something like that screen. Yeah yeah okay. okay. So, uh, oh yeah, well, the screen is here. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, so, uh, uh, so this is the well-known example. Say, so if you consider a black hole in ABS, uh, internal black hole in ABS, and so this is a Kruska diagram, and this is supposed to be dual to two copies of your CFT in the thermal field double state. Okay. So the thermal field double state is a very special state. So if you trace out one of the CFT. Then you get the thermal state for the other uh, uh, CFT. Okay, so uh, uh, so this TFT itself is a pure state, and it's believed that the uh, two copies of this CFT, the thermal field double state, is dual to the uh, yeah, say above the Hawking page transition, is dual to the this internal black hole dual. In particular, uh, this CFT R living on the right boundary of the black hole, and the CFT L living on the left boundary. Of and the, uh, it's a well-known story that the thermal physics, say for example in the right CFT, can be obtained from the bulk physics in the right region. And similarly, the thermal physics in the left CFT can be obtained from the physics in the left region. But, but in the black hole, we also have this future and past region. Okay, uh, here is the singularity uh, which beyond the, the horizon. So it has been a long-standing puzzle how to describe this region, uh, this future and the past region uh, in the boundary theory? Because of the boundary time, say this CFT time, which uh, goes up, uh, join goes up here, so that can be naturally extended into the Schwarzschild time in the in the black hole geometry. But as we know, that the Schwarzschild time actually stops at the horizon. So here goes one into here goes minus infinity, here goes one into two parts infinity, and similarly for the left region. And so we say, uh, your time right stops at the horizon, then how can we actually use the, uh, the boundary theory to describe the future and the past week? And uh, so, uh, yeah, so these are the basic uh, uh, puzzles which has been uh, uh, in the early days of the uh, uh, duality. So, so the time that killing vector only exists outside the horizon. Yes, I already said this many mysteries. And uh, in particular, we know that in the black hole geometry, there's a cross-cut time, uh, which you can actually go uh, in the vertical direction. Okay. And so how do we uh, use in the field theory side to describe this cross-cut time? And not only this uh, Schwarzschild time, but we should also be able to describe this cross -cut. And, uh, and also, how do we see the horizons and the associated causal structure <coughs> in the field theory? And also, in principle, even though there's no interaction between the right and left CFTs, but in principle, you can send objects fully behind the horizon, that they can actually interact in the future region. Okay. So, so how do we understand such kind of thing? So, so, so this is just the one, uh, 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 one of the simplest examples uh, of which this uh, emergence of the causal structure at a different time uh, has become, uh, yeah. So, so uh, more generally, we can consider just some arbitrary uh, uh, space-time region in the box. Okay. So, so, so for example, let's just consider the, the ADS in the vacuum, which are pure as a cylinder. And the, the, again, this is the boundary. And the, not the boundary, it's the cylinder. Uh, so this is the ADS in the vacuum. And you can also ask, so let's consider this causal diamond in the box, okay? And which does not touch the boundary. So, so in principle, you can define this uh, uh, this causal diamond say using uh, uh, different orbit and way. Anyway. anyway, so so a larger question arises: that if you have observers living inside the diamond, how do we use in the boundary theory to describe this internal time 
and in, in interior time and within the diamond. But also there are time which can take you outside the diamond and how do we describe it using the, uh, uh, the field theory. Okay. So, so again, this kind of question you can ask uh, 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 in this kind of context. And, uh, and also, so how do we understand the, uh, uh, the, the causal structure associated with this? And uh, yeah, so, so the boundary uh, uh, distribution of interior time and global time. So, so the goal of the talk is I want to develop a formalism for addressing this question. Okay, at least we want to develop a conceptual framework uh, so that we can answer those questions. So, do you have any questions? Okay, so so before, uh, so let me just say a little bit the slogan, which I want you to get. Okay, so the so the bottom line I want you to convey is that the box space time locality and the various geometric notions, they actually can be understood as a geometrization so of this emergent boundary type three one monuma uh, sub algebras. Okay, so this sentence is a little bit. Uh, 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 I think uh, uh, it looks a little bit exotic. So, so the claim, okay, the claim is that in the large real limit, uh, uh, when you take the uh, uh, the limit of infinite number of degrees freedom in your field theory side, actually in this limit there are lots of emergent type three one monoma algebras. Okay, and uh, it's precisely due to the emergence of these type three one monoma algebras they are responsible for the emergence of the space-time uh, various geometric notions on the space-time, uh, on the gravity side. Say the space-time regions, different notions of time, and uh, 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 causal structure, etc. Can I ask you something? <clears throat> so, for example, just to, so I can just think it in this way. So, if I have basic case Rindler, a Rindler, yeah, what? Time, Rindler, for example, I have Rindler. the rules as the general of time translations in the Rindler patch. Yeah. Then I have the partial t, which is the global time in Minkowski. Yeah. And then if I would say a quantum theory, they are connected by a Bogoliov transformation. Yeah. So is there a notion of saying, okay, I have a Rindler time that is the one that is described by the thermofield double and sort of a Bogoliov on the boundary yeah, yeah, that gives yeah. me time here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what we want to do. Oh. Yeah. And that's precisely what this type 3 one volume algebra oh. enables you to do. Yeah, somehow you take the larger limit, and then you have this emerging type 3 one volume algebra. And that enables you to do this problem both translation. <clears throat> so, so yeah, let me just uh, uh, very quickly say. So we we want to claim the proposal is that the, the, there are many such kind of emergent uh, type three one volume algebra, and they have one to one correspondence with the space time regions in the box, okay, in the gravity side, and uh, uh, and in particular the properties. Of such emergent type three one uh, uh, algebras, and that's leads to uh, geometric notions such as horizons, times, causal structures. So that's why we say that the uh, space time lo uh, locality, yeah, uh, which is reflected in the local regions, uh, uh, causal structure, and that's responding to a geometrization of these local algebras. And so we call this a sub algebra, sub region duality. Okay. Um, so this generalized for, for those people familiar with ABSFT reality, so this generalized uh, 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 as a subcase, which is the previous so called sub region, sub region duality, and also called entanglement wedge reconstruction. So, yeah, just oh, again, sorry. let me just make Could yeah. you clarify in what sense it's a subcase. Yeah, 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 let me just, uh, okay. uh, 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 yeah, let me just clarify that. So, so the standard story for the sub-region sub region duality in the DSFT duality, now I just draw a single time slice, say of the vacuum it is, say uh, the uh, single time slice is a hyperbolic uh, slice, and the, uh, here is the boundary, and here is the interior of the space, uh, space, the spatial section. And now if you look at the region, say this R on the boundary, and then you look at so-called RT surface, a uh, 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 root of surface which describes the entanglement entropy of this region. And then the claim is that the physics in this region, so called the ER, which are between this RT surface and this R, are equivalent to the physics of the R. Okay. And then in the 
Yeah, uh, uh, so that's the standard statement. So we have reformulated this statement. Yeah, but this statement does not apply to this kind of region. Okay, if I have a causal, uh, uh, so, so this sub region, sub region directly applies to very special regions on the gravity side. So it applies to uh, 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 regions are bounded by this kind of RT surface. Yeah, that's yeah. like a very kind of basic question. So when you say the physics on R is equal to the physics on ER, so suppose I want to study some local partition functions yeah. on R, restricted R. Yeah. What what is the ball that produces that within region ER? Yeah, yeah, you can in principle, uh, 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 yeah, just uh, uh, some correlation function in ER can be produced. Yeah. Do people know the explicit the calculation yeah. in yeah. ER to produce yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, 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 in principle, we know, uh, as a two point function, you can do this very explicit. Like, four point function, naively, I will be integrating over the bulk vertices that's everywhere in the bulk region. Yeah, yeah. But somehow you can reduce the calculation just to that region. We believe so. Yeah. yeah. But that's highly non-trivial. Uh, yeah, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, yeah. Uh, when you include the interaction, it's more non-trivial. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, but it's believed so. But you, you see what I mean, like when you do yeah, yeah, yeah. calculation, yeah, you're integrating yeah, over. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Yeah. 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 Yeah, but that just goes one into a specific way to calculate the exactly. function. Exactly. Yeah. It, it, it doesn't mean you cannot yes. encode this. Yes. Yeah. Good. But this only uh, uh, corresponding to some spatial regions in the gravity side. Uh, for example, this does not apply to this kind of region. Okay. But we can actually reformulate this statement in terms of the statement of the equivalent of the operator algebras. So you, uh, we can rephrase this statement, this equivalence, to say that the operator algebra in this region ER in the gravity. This equivalent to the operator algebra in your in your field theory in R. Okay, so, so I formulate them uh, equivalently uh, in terms of operator algebras. So once you uh, formulate them in terms of operator algebras, actually that gives you much much more freedom. Okay, so so now it gives you a much more general language. So now using this uh, 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 algebra, we can actually now be able to describe this kind of region. Okay, and then we can find the, the sub algebras on the uh, boundary which are equivalent to the algebras in this region, uh, to the bulk field operator algebra in this region. And this boundary algebra now no longer have any geometric interpretation. So, in this special case of the boundary algebra, have a geometric interpretation was one into the operator algebra in this region. But in general, uh, uh, they don't have to have, uh, uh, they just correspond to some emergent type 3 y one my algebra. Good. So, so this is a very quick uh, uh, outline of the, uh, uh, the, the message I want to convey. So here is the plan. So first, uh, 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 I want to talk about some key elements used. So, so first is I want to say a, little, uh, a few words about the volume and algebras. Uh, also, I want to highlight some aspect of the Vajian limit of the ADSCFT duality, which is responsible for this kind of emergence. And, uh, and then, then I will uh, give you a general formulation say, of this duality for general box of region. And then, then as a, a specific example, uh, which is the boundary emergence of this cross cut time and the even horizon for internal black hole. And uh, yeah, so, so there are also lots of things I can talk about. You can also talk about more general examples. Uh, so this diamond I mentioned earlier, and also I can talk uh, also there new insight into the sub region sub region duality etc um yeah but but uh, I have never finished the talk uh, uh, with everything <laughs> uh, uh, um, actually once I gave a four hour lecture still didn't finish it <laughs> uh, so so today if I can finish the first two I think it's already a, a, a progress okay so that's the aim for the, for the first two okay <clears throat> Is this yes. sub algebra supported in the, uh, all of the boundary theory or is it supported in the sub region? It's a, uh, yeah, for, uh, for this one, uh, for this one, it's a little bit subtle. For the left one? Yeah, for this one, it's a little bit subtle. Uh, for this one, just supported in the, in, in the sub region. Uh, for this one, it's subtle. For this one, uh, it's actually have to do it in the somewhat more indirect way. It's not, uh, uh, it's not associated with the sub region. Yeah. You mentioned the eternal black hole at the beginning. Yeah. And there's, you can think of that as describing a, a thermal density matrix on one side or the thermal field double on 
besides mm -hmm. the first thermophile double is just one purification of that density matrix. There's right. so infinitely many. Are you going to comment on that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm not going to uh, uh, go into that, but um, yeah, indeed, uh, uh, here I work with a very special space. So the so the uh, 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 the result I'm going to talk about is specific to the thermophile double state. Uh, uh, that's a very special state. Uh, but what we are going to, but the formalism should be generalizable to more general state. Yeah, but our explicit construction, uh, we have detailed calculations which only in the thermal field. Good. Okay. Okay. So 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 here is the uh, not uh, realistic plan. Uh, so so now let me say a few words about volume algebra since uh, uh, not everybody works. With volume algebra on, day, on daily basis. So, so soon after the development of quantum mechanics and its mathematical foundation, say using Hilbert space, so von Neumann and Murray, they uh, uh, initiate the task of classifying operator algebra of quantum systems. So this is a very natural from mathematician point of view. It's also well motivated uh, from, uh, from physicist point of view because the, the operator algebra essentially gives you the algebra of, of observables. And if you can classify the algebra of observables, you should get insight into a physical system. Okay. So, so that's the basic idea. And uh, so, so the reason you normally don't see such a kind, uh, kind of classification, or you don't, we don't normally talk about volume algebra, is because all our textbook discussion, okay, all your quantum mechanics discussion, including uh, in quantum field theory, the operator algebra, yeah, not in quantum field theory. Yeah, this in quantum field theory, we don't yeah, anyway. Uh, 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 so the operator algebra we globally encounter in quantum mechanics are so-called the type one. Okay, so, so we'll not give you a, a rigorous definition of the type one. Uh, I'm just saying in, in type one, the algebra is characterized by the all the projection operators in this uh, uh, algebra are integer rank. Okay, so if you remember the projection operator, uh, operator satisfy p squared equal to p. So the simplest projector is just the psi, okay? So this is a rank one. And if you take two orthogonal states, and then you have rank two, if you have three orthogonal states, you have rank three, et cetera. So, so this kind of projectors we know in your quantum mechanics class, they're all integer rank. Okay. But now if you go to a, a system with infinite number of degrees freedom, say if you have if you have Hilbert space is infinite dimensional, and then you can easily construct project operators with an infinite rank. The sum over infinite number of uh, 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 yeah projecting to infinite number yeah projecting to a subspace uh, uh, which is infinite dimension. It turns out even for for those for even for those projectors of infinite rank, there's still a subset of them. You can define a renormalized rank. Okay, so so after you define this renormalized rank, then the rank actually can take any non-negative real number. Okay, so, so these are called type two. So, so these are the type of sub-algebras, okay, operator algebras, that the rank can be non-negative real number. Okay. Uh, uh, but but uh, in terms of the standard uh, definition, they're all, they're all infinite rank, okay, but you can renormalize them so, so that they have uh, become uh, 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 a valid rank. But then you have so-called type three algebras, which all projection operators are infinite rank. Okay, just in this sub-algebra, any projecting operator, they have infinite rank, even in this renormalized sense. Okay. Uh, just you, uh, you cannot even renormalize that. Yes? So, for, so are all type twos limits of type one? Uh -huh. um, so you, you, can, you, can, uh, you can build type two as limit of type one. Uh, just do an infinite number of tensor products of type ones. And then you can show that the, the, the other type twos, they are isomorphic. To this, uh, yeah, uh, to this infinite uh, product. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, uh, 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 I think that the all type two are hyperfinite. Yeah, they are isomorphic to hyper. If I have a like a CF one plus one CFT defined yeah. on a circle, like yeah, is that type two? Uh, no, that's type three. Uh, uh, the uh, 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 look at sub region will be type uh, type three. Yeah. Uh, if you look at the full Hilbert space. Uh, 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 for any theory, if you look at the full operator algebra in, in the Hilbert space, it's always by definition type one. It's always type one. Yeah, the full, uh, the full operator. Yes. Uh, why, why is progression operators particularly useful object to 
Yeah, um, there is a yeah. For example, the um, yeah, there's a very good reason the physically we like to have them. It's because the, for any for any Hermitian operators, you can do a spectral decomposition. And when you do this spectral decomposition, you essentially convert that operator in terms of superposition of all the projection operators uh, into the uh, uh, yeah each range of the spectrum. I, I, and, uh, and if you understand the uh, uh, projection operators, then you understand all. Yeah, yeah, but there are there are more there are more actually fundamental mathematical reasons, uh, and why you want to interest in this kind of thing is related to the material space uh, uh, compared to topological space. Yeah, I will not go into. It's also related that you want this operator to be bounded. Yeah, uh, uh, it, uh, 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 the, the bounded it uh, certainly you want them to be bounded. Yeah, so you can impose some kind of energy. Phenomenal algebras are always for bounded. Yeah, yeah. You, uh, uh, you want them to be bounded. Uh, uh, but the, the, uh, uh, in contrast to this volume algebra, there's also something called C star algebra. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so C star algebra is, yeah, anyway, uh, there's some subtle mathematical uh, differences between them, and corresponding to the difference between topological space and mm -hmm. the, uh, and the, the, uh, the material space. Because, you know, these are algebras that were defined and they are defined also originally as algebras for operators in the space. If an operator is not bounded, then it's not defined on the interval space. That means it's defined on uh, a dense subset at yes. best, but not as much darkness. Okay, good. So uh, I thought that the, the, for type three, uh, all the projectors are equivalent, right? So they're all equivalent. To, that's all the identity. Right? They're, they're all equivalent to. They all as yeah. They're all equivalent to that identity. Yeah. Any uh, any infinite projection operators. Uh, they are, uh, uh, in some sense, if you cannot renormalize their equipment. But when you talk about algebra, are you talking about factors? Yeah, I'm talking about factors. Yeah, but uh, yeah, just uh, for my level of the talk, I'm not going to that uh, level of detail. Because, I mean, in particular, for your example, it's yeah, yeah. important that yeah, it's we always can see the factor. not a factor. Yeah, we always can see the factor. We always can see the factor. Okay, good. So, so Volima himself actually had high hope that this classification would actually be very important in physics. So, so he actually had high hope that type two algebra would be very important in physics because he thought type one is too trivial and type three he didn't understand. <laughs> <laughs> so type two is like complicated enough to have very rich structure, but it's not too simple, okay? And so he said maybe it, type two will dominate physics. But he didn't actually live to see that day. Okay, <laughs> only only much later people realize actually the people found applications of type two and type three uh, uh, algebras now find important applications in quantum statistical physics and quantum field theory. And you can understand why because the, uh, you, uh, when you take the some of the limit, limits, then you always deal with infinite number of freedom, and then the, and then you lead to uh, this kind of this lead to your type three uh, type two or type three. So in particular. If you look at relativistic quantum field series, local operator algebra in any local region, okay, is always type three one. So type three one is a sub class of type three. Uh, uh, so types uh, 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 Volume and Wheeler they didn't understand type three. They just pointed out the existence of type three. And then later, uh, Alan Cohn classified type three and the, uh, the different types, and uh, uh, he got a field model uh, uh, for that. And so this type three one is a very special type of the uh, type three algebras. Okay, we are not going to detail how to define them. Uh, uh, just to mention that for relativist QFTs and the local operator algebra in any local region is the type three one. Okay, and this is type three one for good reason. So let me just mention. So uh, so let me give you an example. So let's consider one plus one dimensional quantum field theory. Uh, say say this is just the one of uh, uh, ones. Well, spatial. Sorry, can you define what means what local uh, region means? Yeah, just uh, it's a local. Yeah, just what we normally mean. A, a, a quantum field theory in a circle. The circle is definitely local because it's finite uh, volume, etc. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. It's a subregion of circle. One, it, it's a continuous subregion of a circle. Yeah. yeah, but why not the circle? Mm -hmm. I mean. Oh, you think, uh, yeah, I think take the full circle. When take the full circle, then you have just have full full uh, full yes. the algebra. Yeah, you have a full operator algebra, which is type one. Yeah, so yeah. what do you mean by local region? Yeah, yeah, yeah I should say local subregion. So it's a, it, what does it mean local again? I, I really don't understand the, the, what you mean by local. There should be a definition that you can put on a blackboard. Right? 
Right. What does it mean? Can you define it? Yeah, uh, uh, for example, uh, like, for example, do you have a definition? Yeah, yeah, just connected region. A connected region, yeah. open, closed, bounded, unbounded. Um, open, yeah. Open, yeah. Bounded. Uh, it doesn't have to be bounded. So it, be, it, it has to be an open set. Yeah, it has to be open set. And it has to be a proper subset because you see, I mean, otherwise you get into a proper subset of the space. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, mean, you want to yeah, be rigorous, it yeah, cannot yeah, be rigorous yeah, and sloppy yeah, at the same time. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I want to be rigorous, just maybe not rigorous here. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. again, what, what does it mean local? I, do you have a, really a definition where you say local means. Da, da, da. Yeah, just local. I mean. <laughs> means what? Something. That you yeah, 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 just connect, <laughs> yeah, yeah. For example, so you know, connected. Some hand waving. Yeah, yeah connected open set. Connected open set. It's a connected open set. Connected sub open set. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, of your, uh, uh, for example, of your spatial structure. And it's a proper subset, of course. Yeah, it's a proper subset. So yeah. the, the, the complement should be non empty. Yeah, right. yeah, exactly. Yeah, not equal to, not equal to empty, not equal to the full set, and uh, yeah. And no other restrictions? Um, yeah, I think that you can. The topology doesn't. Uh, 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 I think I, I don't want to uh, uh, go into those top uh, uh, the subtleties of the top uh, uh, topology. Yeah, I think the topology should not matter, but but there are some uh, subtleties with topology uh, in defining the algebra. Yeah, but yeah, but it, it should not matter. Here. Okay. Yeah, let's just consider this simple example. Just one dimensional space. Okay. And now let's imagine the divided into right and the left part. And now let's look at all the operators, all the field theory operators localized in the red region. Okay? So and you take out the zero, right? You take out the point. Yeah, the yeah, you take out point. Yeah. It's an open set. Yeah, open set. Not including that point. And then now the operator in this region R is type 3 1. Okay, and this type 3 1 is for good reason because this reflects that in, in quantum field theory, in any state, okay, any finite energy state, in your quantum field theory, there are always infinite amount of entanglement between the R and the L region. Okay, so so this type three wide structure essentially reflects that. Okay, uh, it, it reflects you have infinite entanglement in any state between R, uh, R and L. Also, it further can be shown that this type three one is is uh, 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 important for the existence of a sharp causal structure. Means that you have a sharp light cone, just that your commutator vanish exactly outside the light cone. Uh, so here, uh, what I mean by sharp photos, just the commutator vanish exactly uh, outside. The light. And for that, you require type three one. And this again is a factor, yeah. not just an element. It's a factor. So the, there is no operator. The only operators that belong to, to the <coughs> algebra and its commutant. Uh, Numbers, the same numbers. That's Wait, right. if I take this one, this one, here you have a circle, and I remove yeah. a single point. Mm -hmm. If I remove a single point from the circle, right, then what remains? So yeah. So, 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 if you, um, yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, so, so normally, uh, uh, if you remove that point, does not matter. Yeah, just say it, it relate. Yeah, yeah. It, in that case, remove a single point does not matter. Set, a proper subset of the space. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a subtle issue how you deal with an individual point. Yeah. So I think that maybe you want the complement. Yeah, to yeah, the, to be also open. Yeah, be, because the point is that you cannot define. A, a, there's no way to define the operator as a single point. Because if you want to define a field operator, you always have to smear it. So, so what last was that you want to complement to be open as well as the set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you always, so, yeah, just physically you always want to smear it. If, because if you don't smear it, the, the operator localized at that point is always uh, not really defined in, in, in quantum field theory. I guess it means the commutant of the sub is not trivial. Yeah, in principle you can define a, a operator at that point just so that's no, for, uh, for the type three algebras, algebra is uh, uh, just, just to make clear one thing, for type 3 algebras the, the, the commutant uh, is in a sense, I, in some sense, isomorphic to the algebra right? because it's uh, indeed in many of the uh, mm, theorems and things that we prove in field theory, we don't really need the type three property. What is more important many times is that the, the vacuum of one state is uh, um, uh, cyclic and separating. If it, 
strictly in separating then the algebra and its commutant have many, well, have the same properties. So for, um, if uh, the vacuum of quantum field theory is strictly in separating for any operator subalgebra in any uh, in any open set, and the commutant is also, uh, and, and this same vector is also silky and separated and equal the commutant. You can yeah. create any state with operators in, in any little piece of space that you want. Good, good. Okay, so 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 since again, not everybody uh, deal with this uh, operator algebra on a daily basis, so let me just also mention a few remarks so why should we care about operator algebras when we think about, say, quantum field theory or when we think about quantum gravity? And uh, also, why is classification of monomial algebras actually relevant? Uh, um, so, yeah, it, it, somehow they have to do with this arcane properties of the projection operator and why they should be relevant for us. Okay. So, so here, I mean, just, I'm just going to make some remarks. Uh, 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 it's not easy to substantiate them, but, but, but hope to give you some feeling. So what has been realized for the, I think, for the last few decades in many different branches of physics, in this matter, high energy, gravity, uh, uh, etc., is that key to understanding a quantum system is its entanglement structure. Okay. So if you consider a system with a finite number of these freedom, and then you can consider the standard notion we describe in quantum, uh, uh, in textbook. Uh, you define a, a sub uh, reduce sensitive operator associated with a subsystem, and then you look at entanglement entropies or other things you can build using this uh, reduced sensitive operator. Okay, and so this is the whole area of quantum information. Uh, 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 I build on those things, but 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 if you consider systems with infinite number of degrees freedom. Then these quantities are often not well defined. Okay, so so if you go to quantum field theory, you can uh, if you look at a, 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 a sub region, you can actually not define the reduced density operator for that region, and the, uh, uh, the, the entangled entropy, strictly speaking, does not define. Okay, so 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 we can try to introduce some Kharkov to make them define, but it's not the intrinsic defined in the continuum limit. Okay, so when you introduce a Kharkov, you often lose properties. Some properties intrinsic to the continuum limit. But there's actually a way out. So even for these systems with infinite number of degrees freedom, you don't have to always say introduce a cutoff, introduce a regularization. Okay. So actually there's an intrinsic way to talk about the entanglement. And that is to use the uh, the operator algebra in that subsystem. Okay. So so when this finite so this system is finite number degrees freedom. You you consider two subsystems one, two. Then we consider reduced density operator for this system subsystem one. But equivalently, we can talk about the operator algebra in this subsystem one. And actually, that captures the same kind of entanglement information. Okay, the relation between the operator algebra here uh, and the operator algebra here, and those kind of relations actually uh, capture the entanglement information in the same way. Okay. But this operate, uh, but this uh, uh, operate algebra kind of description can actually be in, degeneralized to this infinite number degree freedom case, and the still uh, and the, uh, they can be, uh, be generalized in the intrinsic way. Okay, so entanglement structure is also included in the operate structure and give you a more general and a unified approach. Okay, so so even in the in the case which you cannot define those things, actually uh, 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 this operate algebra. Or provide the alternative, and uh, so and so that makes the classification of the volume algebra actually very important. Because even though the volume and the Murray themselves didn't know it, and many mathematicians and physicists who, who worked on this subject they didn't know it, but in modern language as we look at it now, actually what this volume algebra classification was bonding to. It's actually they are classifying different entanglement patterns. So you have this type two, type one, type two, type three, and different type three algebras. What they are doing is just uh, classify different entanglement patterns, universal entanglement structure, okay, which does not depend on details of, of your individual system or individual state. So that's why uh, this is very powerful. Okay, uh, this is very powerful. 
So, uh, so it's like what uh, group theory do, do, do for you for symmetries. Okay. So this uh, uh, this is what the uh, uh, volume algebra uh, uh, should do for us for for entanglements. Okay. In particular, uh, this type three one captures entanglement structure needed to have the sharp line cones. So if you want to have sharp causal structure, then you should have this. Uh, um, Okay, and then, then this is a quick introduction to the volume algebra. Then, then let me also say a few words about the, uh, 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 the, the spirality of my dynamics. I emphasize what we want to see is this uh, 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 in the infinite n limit, what happens, how the space time geometry arises, and uh, we want to understand the emergent physical and mathematical structure. Okay. So it's a, it's a yeah. conceptually. Yes. So the claim is that I have to have. Like three algebra to think about horizons. Or to, to think about sharp horizons in the sense that the yeah mm -hmm. uh, when we law uh, define the causal light cone and the horizons, they define in terms that the commutator yeah. vanish. Or they vanish strictly speaking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so again, this is a, assuming I have a linear type, right? but like I can have a quantum surface which is discrete in both space and time. I have a sharp light. Cone. Yeah, they are, they are the, yeah, you have to have a, 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 a continuous time. Yeah, so yeah we have a discrete time. Yeah, yeah, we have a continuous time uh, when you define on the lattice, then uh, they always stick outside of the lattice. Yeah, yeah, discrete time is a, is a more funny thing. Uh, quick comment about that. Yeah. In the case of the eternal black hole, yeah. even when n is finite, there should still be some sense of a sharp light cone. You should not be able to influence the, say, left CFT by throwing in something from the right CFT. But what, whether that is reflected in the light cone structure, we don't know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 certainly, uh, uh, what we normally say is that when you go to find a Newton, somehow we expect the light cone to be fuzzy, etc. Yeah, we don't have the language to talk. To talk about such things. Yeah. Okay, so so now let me say some uh, aspect of the large n limit of the duality. So consider, say, uh, uh, as a prototype example, for example, in for super Yamil theory uh, with the gauge group S U N, and then the n goes infinite limit, which uh, which corresponds to this rank of the gauge group goes infinity. And the key is that when you take the large n limit, the limit is actually subtle. Because the many states and the operators, they do not, uh, they do not actually have a well-defined large limit. So you need to keep, you need to look at only those objects which actually have a well-defined limit. And so that's why, so uh, uh, that's why uh, when you only look at those subsets which only have a well-defined large limit, and then the structure of the Hilbert space and the operator algebras, they can undergo dramatic changes in the large limit. Okay, so that is responsible for the emergence, okay, uh, uh, for the emergence. So, so when, when you say it does not necessarily have what defined large n limit, you mean it uh, has, what, what do you mean precisely? Yeah, yeah, uh, 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 I will explain that. So, so let me just give you a, philosoph uh, a philosophical analog of it. So let's consider again, just consider one dimensional system, uh, consider the system uh, first on the lattice, uh, some lattice facing A, and then if you take A go to zero, you get, uh, uh, you got the continuum limit, Okay, so now let's look at that this operator. Uh, 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 now let's look at again, look at the right region and the left, uh, separating the right region and left region. So on the lattice, and then uh, uh, then this operator algebra is just type one, so a standard story. Uh, the Hilbert space can be factorized into HR times HL, and then the operator algebra in the, in the uh, AR would be type one. But now when you take the continuum limit, Okay, when you take a continuum limit, so we know that when you take a equal to zero limit, many states which uh, they may go to, uh, uh, the energy may depend on A, and the many states uh, whose energy diverge with A, uh, then they drop out uh, uh, of the uh, uh, um, uh, continuum limit. And, uh, and obviously, uh, the operator which connects those states with some other states, uh, those operators also drop out. Okay, so, so, so in the A to the zero limit again, only a subset of states and operators survive. 
And the fact that, it, that now, if you look at that state with finite amount of energy, and then you find that the Hilbert space is not factorizable. It's now you always, because you always have infinite, uh, all those finite energy states always have infinite entanglement between right and left. On the left is you can have arbitrary amount of entanglement between R and the right, including entanglement zero. Because you can have factorized states. But, but we have a continuum limit that's not possible. Okay, a factorized state in this limit have infinite amount of energy. And, uh, and so they drop out of your spectrum. And, uh, and then in the continuum limit, and then there's some kind of emerging new structure. And, uh, and then now this uh, 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 operator will become type 3 one. And, uh, and on the left is, you, you don't have a sharp light cone. So if you look at the commutator, no matter how far away, there's always some tiny tail. Okay, a spatial, uh, a space like separated, they can always have some tiny tail. And, but, but then to, to make that strictly zero, then you need these types you want. Could, could you give an example of, of uh, such an operator that you lose or why, why the non-factor, I mean, it all sort of generally makes sense, but it would be easier for me to understand if it were more concrete. Right, yeah, yeah, so, uh, so that's a good question. So, uh, so, so, yeah, so, so intuitively, yeah, just take the, um, take the ground state. So the ground, the factorize the ground state, say zero. So, you, so the, for, uh, for the factorized the Hilbert space, you have this zero right and the zero left, okay? And uh, so, uh, so you have this state. Let's just look at the projection operator to this state. And so that projection operator has to drop out. Okay, because this state no longer exists. Yeah. Yeah, so this is a very simple example. Yeah. Yeah, there are also many such kind of states. And then you can uh, build operators which act within those states. Good. So, um, so now, now let me talk about what kind of operator should survive. So in the angle before, so we are mills, for example, but similarly you can define for other series. So the operator we define operator have a sensible large limit. Say so if it's vacuum correlation function, I have a very defined angle to infinity. So the vacuum is a state which is special because it's universal, uh, uh, which you can yeah uh, have a, always take the uh, 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 exists for any value of n, so you can take angle to infinity. And so, and then we use vacuum to define uh, the operator. We say the operator which have sensible large n limit if it's a vacuum correlation function. So that's give you to the, and then that's give you the finite product of the single trace operator. So, so essentially those operators built from finite, uh, from a, a single trace uh, of a finite uh, number of fields. And, uh, and then, then in the large n limit, this finite product of single trace operator they form an algebra. So we call them single trace operator algebra. And so this is for the full theory. Okay, and then we, uh, then we can look at the sub algebra. And the, uh, so the surprising thing about this operator algebra and the subset, uh, and any sub algebra of it, the two surprising features uh, of large n limit. So the first feature is that this algebra actually becomes state dependent. So, so when you look at, so normally in quantum mechanics, when we look at operator algebras or quantum field theory, the operator algebras, they, they are independent of your definition of your state. Okay, the operator I'm sorry, I don't know what a single trace operator is. I, I apologize. Okay, yeah. yeah, can you see the blackboard? Unfortunately not, the oh. video is horrible. Okay, um, so, so, so just take the, um, yeah, so, so one example is just to say, Say, yes, in the Yamil theory, take F mu mu, F mu mu trace, uh -huh. with single trace, yeah. Oh, okay, okay, thank you, sorry. It was more or less complicated than I thought. Yeah, 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 just like that, yeah. Yeah, and then you can just take such a, a product of them. Yeah, the reason is that such kind of operators, so they have well, uh, they, they have light factorization properties in the larger limit, and they have light scaling properties, yeah. Yeah, great, thanks. So, so actually they become state dependent, okay? Uh, and uh, it, 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 yeah, it takes a few minutes to explain this, but, but uh, yeah, let me uh, 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 not go into that, but uh, let me just emphasize 
uh, that actually to be able to define this algebra, actually you need to use the information of the state. And the second is that the single trace operator at different times are not independent. And so, uh, uh, so yeah, so uh, uh, so this feature was also used by Shalyan yesterday. So, so let me just emphasize that. So let's just look at this causal diamond. Say, uh, say in the quantum field theory. So let's look at two slides of this causal diamond. This also can be full flat space time. Okay, it, it, you can also be a finite causal region. And so, so look at operate algebra associated with this blue slides and operate algebra associated with this red slides, which are called a1, a2. So in ordinary quantum field theory, or or for in the super Yamil theory at finite rank, then the, then these two operate algebra are just equivalent. They equivalent in a physical way because you. See, you can use the Heisenberg evolution. So any operator on this A2, you can use Heisenberg evolution, then from causality is always supported in these blue slides. And the vice versa. Okay. So 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 the operator uh, 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 so they are operated just equivalent. And, uh, and anything here can be expressed in here, and anything here can be expressed in here. But in the larger limit. For the algebra of single trace operators, this become not equivalent. And the reason is very simple. Suppose imagine at the finite n, you have an operator here, then you can use the uh, Heisenberg evolution to express in terms of operator uh, lying on the blue slice. But when you take the large n limit, some subset of those operators, they drop out in the large n limit because they're not well defined. And then, then the operate, single trace operator here can no longer be expressed just in terms of single trace operator here on the blue slice. Okay, so, so that means now these two algebra become independent of each other. Okay, and, uh, and this actually gives you a much richer structure. So, uh, so this, even though it's very simple, but it gives you a very richer structure uh, in the infinite limit. So that makes your algebraic structure much, much richer than, than what you would have, say, at the final end. I mean, I don't know about this, but that intuitively, if I do time evolution, then I can go to A2 and I can invert the evolution and go back. Like, the intuitive idea of why I cannot evolve something here and give information here, and it's encoding the same doesn't work anymore if you're in the domain of dependence. Yeah, like, yeah. The, the, what is that it breaks, that intuitive time evolution that yeah. we usually use? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, one way is, as I said, uh, uh, if you express the operator in terms of here, some of the operator drops out. So if you want to also think of it in terms of Hamiltonian evolution, so so in Hamiltonian evolution, so the Heisenberg evolution is realized through this state, but the but the Hamiltonian in the Yamil theory actually there's an explicit n dependence here. So this corresponds to n dependence uh, times some other operator which is independent of n. So because of this M, which makes this operator actually not well defined in the angle infinity limit. Yeah, yeah. and so, so this evolution operator actually drops out from your structure. So that's why you can no longer directly uh, relate the operator here to that uh, through straightforward Heisenberg evolution. And because this is no longer part of your single trace operator. Okay, good. So, so also Hilbert space are very uh, dramatic changes, and uh, yeah, uh, uh, I will not have time to go to much details. So, uh, so let me all, uh, all just see, uh, say it briefly. The many states don't have a well-defined energy limit. So terrible. But uh, yeah. for you know, the stress hazard definitely in the is in the in the Hilbert space that we, I mean, in the single trace sector. Yeah, uh, yeah, depending on your so is yeah, so so the But you're saying that the finite time evolution is not No no no. Yeah. So 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 the stress tensor is normally defined in this way. Single trace of something. Yes. Say say this is T mu mu. Yes. So 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 this is in your single trace over there. That's right. But H is n times this T zero zero. Yes. So you have to multiply n. Yes. So this n is crucial. So I'm, what I'm trying to say is that if I can this is in your algebra. Yeah, yeah. What but I'm but this say, is not. I, I know. Yeah, so yeah, so yeah. what I was trying to say is that I can consider infinitesimal time revolution. That's good. Yeah, but but that don't take you. Never take you to a finite time. Yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah. I mean, okay. finite in the sense of even one where n. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah, yeah. Just any order one time. Okay. Yeah, any, yeah. It's only at most the one of n time. Yeah. 
Okay, so yeah, also many states don't have a well defined Nagyan limit. So we define a state to have a well defined Nagyan limit if correlation functions of single trace operator with expectation values subtracted in it has a well defined Nagyan. So this definition also is consistent with what you we normally see on the gravity side anyway. Uh, we don't need to go into detail that. So uh, and in particular, we refer to a state with a well-defined Nagyan limit and also have the factorization property uh, uh, as in the vacuum called semi-classical state. So these are kind of states which can dual to the, uh, uh, to the classical geometry on the gravity side. And uh, anyway, so, uh, uh, so, so examples of this kind of semi-classical state including vacuum, some of density operators, some of your double state, etc. Okay. And so uh, uh, again, the bottom line is that it's subtle okay, to define the state in the angle to infinity limit. So, so, so you have to be careful. Uh, uh, you have to be careful. So, so for this semi-classical semi state, take a semi-classical state, then we can actually build the Hilbert space around it by acting finite product of single trace operator on it. Okay, so this is essentially the Hilbert space of small excitations uh, uh, around this semi-classical state. Okay, and so this is purely in the CFT side. Okay, and uh, and uh, and you can actually make this rigorous. So this is called the GS Hilbert space. And now the uh, so the so essentially the claim is that in the large limit, only semi-classical states and the states around them survive. Okay, and then the space and the, the full states full space of states no longer have a structure of a single Hilbert space. They they essentially split into disconnected GNS Hilbert spaces around semi-classical states. So you have these different semi-classical states, and each of them uh, you can build a Hilbert space around it. And so this is the structure of, of, of the state space in the Nagyan limit. So superpositions of these states are not semi-classical. Yeah, it's not semi-classical. Exactly. That's because of factorization. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If I can sum them, or is there some sort of like fine symmetry breaking here? I can exist on like one of these states. Yeah, you can sum over them, but uh, but those states just don't have any uh, 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 semi-classical implication. Yeah, it's like. Uh, it's like a shorting of cat caps. And then uh, I already emphasized that the, the single trace over the edge will actually depend on your state. So, so a, a different side is to different single trace over the edge, uh, with possibly very different mathematical and physical properties. We will we'll see uh, examples of this. And uh, the same structure actually appears on the gravity side, because, because in the gravity side, essentially, in the G Newton goes to the zero limit, we just get distinct classical geometry. And then we quantize gravity fields uh, uh, around the uh, semi-classical geometry. So, so just to summarize, the structure of the idea CFT duality at not in, he said we have some semi-classical state due to some geometry. And then here we can build the GNS Hilbert space around it. And here we can build the box space around it, and then they are identified. So this is the standard idea CFT dictionary. And so, so to draw a picture is like this. Essentially, you have this disconnected semi-classical state. Each one of them have their own Hilbert space. Okay. So this, for example, this is the one around the vacuum. So this is the one around some of your double state, and then you can have some other ones. And those different Hilbert space, they don't overlap. And also, when you identify those Hilbert spaces, okay, around each geometry, and then you should also identify the, uh, the, uh, the operator algebra. On both sides. And so this is the operator algebra on this GNS Hilbert space, and this is the operator algebra on the on the box side. So, so like, what would be intuitively an observer to say what, what algebra you have? Absolute absolute say one or algebra of side two. I mean what is a non-gauge invariant thing that would tell me you are expanding around this semi-classical state or you're rounding around this semi-classical state? Yeah, 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 yeah. For example, say if we uh, uh, expand around the vacuum, so this is one of that. So this is the vacuum, and on the gravity side, this is just some empty ADS. And then if you look at uh, correlation functions, you can tell it's a vacuum correlation function. But wouldn't be more, um, uh, but if I, I mean, intuitively, I mean, maybe my basic is CFT, I mean, I have the vacuum and it's in the center because I have to basically turn off all interactions. I mean, I have nothing in the bulk, and then I have basically a free theory on the other side. But if I have something that is more involved in the bulk, well, it will not be a free theory, a free CFT. I mean, likewise, 
Oh, but in the, uh, in the, in the, in the limit. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't matter. Uh, uh, this is just a general principle. It doesn't matter which state you have. Uh, and the just general structure applies. So, um, yeah. if you scatter two particles of high energy in right. ABS, there's some amplitude for them to form, let's say, a large black hole, and some amplitude for them not to. Mm. And so that initial state will evolve into two distinct and classical right. states of some superposition of these two. Yeah. yeah. So that process and determining which states are semi classical and which ones aren't is difficult to describe even in much simpler context with just you know, standard quantum systems. Right? Deciding which basis is the basis of into which things do get here. Yeah, yeah, it is a, 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 it is a little bit tricky. So, uh, so but, but in the example you talk about, I think you should be able to, a big, because if you have two very high energy particles from a black hole, so your initial state must have very high energy. Yeah, but they can either form a black hole or they can just scatter and not. Yeah. Perhaps equal probability. So uh, there's an evolution into a superposition of two semi classical states. Yeah, it, it just, uh, um, yeah, say if they really form a black hole, essentially the probability will all dominate into the black hole channel because of the, uh, uh, yeah, if the two uh, can form a black hole, then the probability for them to, to hard scatter into two high energy particles coming out is exponentially small amplitude. No, no, that's not true. Scatter them with an impact parameter, which is around the torsional radius of the black hole. Oh, oh yeah, the, the impact, uh, uh, then that's encoded in the, uh, uh, in the structure of the initial state. Yeah, correct. Yeah. So, so I'm just saying, you can have a, an initial state, which is one of your semi classical states, and it can evolve into a superposition of two. It's a completely standard thing, right? It's, yeah. It's all the time in quantum systems. But it, isn't it actually? It's yeah, but the Heisenberg state, they don't, yeah, if you think about the Heisenberg picture, they don't involve. I just have the state. Uh, and then whatever the whatever the property is already fixed. Yeah, I'm just pointing out that it sounds like you have a rather simple criterion for deciding what are semi-classical states and what aren't. Yeah. Right, and superpositions of semi-classical states are no longer semi-classical and so on. That, yeah. if, if it works, would be interesting in many other contexts because that's a hard but thing I think to that here the question is whether you are at large end, you, you are defining a theory as an asymptotic series at large end or perturbatively in one over n, or if you are strictly at any point infinity. Um, yeah, I think you can do it perturbatively in not gn. Yeah, perturbatively in one of the n. Yeah. yeah, then we are just look, uh, look at the leading order in that perturbative expansion. So, in that perturbative order in this uh, expansion. Yeah, this is the leading order. Well, in, in probably in the leading order, you see not like, I mean, it's, 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 Yeah, it's, it's strictly infinite yeah. ends. Yeah. It's, it's classical. But if you can do this in any situation where it's not exactly classical, yeah, yeah, those stories certainly is tricky. Yeah, I think one over n for the Bayesian theory, you may be able to do, uh, it should be fine. Uh, but if you want to think about black hole uh, uh, formation in the, yeah, black hole formation is uh, intrinsically a non-perturbative process. And so uh, that you have to be careful. Yeah, yeah, that I don't claim to, uh, to understand. And you can do this without black hole formation. You can do it for systems that could collapse into a, into a gravitationally bound star or not. Oh, yeah, that's system. fine. Yeah, that's fine. I think that's fine. Yeah, that, uh, then two leading order is just uh, described by some classical geometry. Right, but the point is you can easily set up an initial state that will not evolve into a classical geometry. It will evolve into a Schrodinger's cat type state where it's a superposition of multiple classical geometries. Uh, no, no, I think, I think, uh, 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 yeah, if you believe GR, uh, and, then, uh, and then that is not happening, right? Uh, uh, you don't have equal probability to form, say, a sum. Or, or, or some other star at the same, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, you either just form a sum or, or, or you just form some other star. You don't form a physical probability uh, of the sum or some other star. Well, classical GR. Yeah. Yes. But if we can talk about finite end corrections, if we can talk about quantum events, then, then people do experiments like this every day, right? This is not something that's out. Yeah, it is. So it's but that you have to think on the finite GU. But, uh, you have to. but I think the question is that. When you map, when you do this mapping, where yeah. there is a property space associated with the state inside, yeah, uh, this cannot be done for any state because this relationship. Yeah, yeah, this cannot be done for any state. Yeah, this is just for this, uh, uh, for what I defined the semi-classical state is have this factorization property. Yeah, so uh, some of the state you talk about may not have factorization property, and then uh, uh, then this will not apply. But I don't think those actually describe what we would think of as semi-classical states because again. Oh. Lab every day. It's just not, not a 
yeah, I think I think that you define. Yeah, I think uh, to define those things precisely is very subtle. Okay, so so here I'm just satisfied uh, uh, already to say for large class of geometries. Okay, uh, I can define this way, and uh, so 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 that there may be examples uh, uh, which subtle. You, you have to carefully think about. Uh, 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 yeah, whether you can define precisely derivatively in Newton or actually some number derivative information about Newton, etc. Yeah, those inform yeah those questions are very hard. Not talking about sharp uh, horizon. We are already ten minutes of time, so maybe. Yeah. Oh, for you, sorry, let me go down. Okay. So, <laughs> so are you in part two already? <laughs> no, already still. Oh, oh, I didn't. We are still in part one. <laughs> yeah, this is the last slide of part one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So maybe uh, so in view of time, maybe we can yeah first, and then uh, whoever wants to stay, right, right, and we can yeah, you know, yeah. continue. All right. So maybe let's uh, thank Paul again. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, whoever wants to hang around. Right, yeah, yeah, somehow. Uh, and you have a cutoff uh, because of the meeting with Andrea. Right, right, right. Right, yeah. Okay. So there's yeah. a hard cutoff. Yeah, yeah, let me just, uh, uh, yeah, for those who are interested, I just write it quickly. Yeah. Uh, it's right. Uh, uh, yeah. It's, okay. So, uh, so the basic. So now we can consider, say, a causally complete quark region, say, say, B, and then in the Gilutin goes to zero limit, and in the Gilutin, yeah, uh, uh, I'm always considered the leading order in the Gilutin goes to zero limit. So, so in this limit, we can talk about the sharp region, okay, and then the then the then the gravity field theory side just reduced to quantum to leading order is the quantum field theory in curved space time, and then here we can look at the, the Bach field operate algebra in that region. And then, as I mentioned, that the quantum field theory uh, in any say uh, 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 space time region say, is type three one, and then this would be a sub algebra, say of your bar corporate algebra. And then, from the duality, since this is a sub algebra of your bar algebra, there must be okay. If the duality has to work, then there must be some emerging type three one algebra in the boundary. Okay, uh, uh, which is the sub algebra of your full boundary theory algebra in this limit. And then this two should be identified. Okay, this two should be identified. And conversely, if you like to conjecture say, any type 3 1, any emergent type 3 1 uh, uh, algebra in the, in the boundary, maybe there exists some kind of arc read. Okay, and this conversely is a little bit, uh, yeah, pure speculation. But again, it's a causal reconstitution. Um, yeah, cost, yeah, yeah, B should be uh, uh, always closer. So, what is the requirement on the sub algebra that, that shows that? Huh? What is the requirement on the sub algebra that shows that the region uh, should be causally complete? Uh, yeah, it's essentially because of the algebra itself is complete. Yeah, so the algebra uh, by definition is complete uh, by itself. And so so that's why it should correspond to some closely complete region. Let's see. I mean, if I have, let's say, a translation symmetry in the box, yeah. then um, I can take a free field and look at the algebra formed by operator carrying the n momentum. Yeah. Uh, then there won't correspond to any sub algebra. Yeah, that sub algebra, I don't know what is the late. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, those sub algebra, they don't survive uh, uh, when you take on interactions. Yeah, yeah. So, I, uh, uh, so it's a uh, it's a little bit artificially defined. So, so the so the fact that the, you you are only looking at algebras that survive when you turn on small random. No, no, I'm just saying this is a natural. Uh, 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 this kind of is a natural object we look at on the on the yeah yeah. On this. Okay. Yeah. So so. Uh, yeah, so and then you can identify them. So, so, so now you can use this framework okay, to describe how you describe such a region. Okay. So, so here I'm just giving you some claim, and then and then uh, and then explicit examples you can try to justify those claims. And so the claim is that 
now the interior time of B, so, so once you know this boundary algebra to be equivalent to this uh, the bulk algebra in this region, and then you can uh, the interior time of B then can be described by the modular flow. So, so, so when you have a volume algebra, then there's some quantity called the modular flow, uh, which is like some kind of time flow, and uh, 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 then can generate this kind of interior time. And then, then this global time, which can take you outside, and corresponding to this half-sided modular flow. And then also the uh, this causal structure then comes from some non-analytic behavior under this half-sided modular flow. Anyway. Uh, 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 so sorry, um, this uh, relation between the modular flow and time. Yeah. Also, we only know it for conformal field theory. So the, it's about in general the bulk field is nicely. Yeah. Is yeah. So so this just define a time. So this time which you define from the modular flow will not be in general will not be a local time in the gravity side, but we are guaranteed to be an internal time. It's an interior time, but the, but it's not some kind of a, a simple geometric. Okay, so 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 now we can talk about this black hole. Yeah, uh, so this is explicit example. And again, so so the uh, the uh, the boundary description, future top region, post collect time, um, and the, the the horizon and associated photo structure. We like to understand that. So so now here is the key. So so at finite n, so now let's look at the two quantum field theory in the thermal field double state. Okay. And now if you look at the operator algebra of the right CFT, and then at finite n, this is just the standard operator algebra in your right Hilbert space, and that is the uh, uh, just the standard type 1 on human algebra. But the claim is that now in the light JN limit, if you look at the algebra generated by single trace operators, those survive, and then they actually have different nature. So, so you can actually, uh, I will not go into the detail uh, how you show this. You said for the temperature smaller than the Hawking page transition, sufficient low temperature, you find that this is the type still remain type one. But the, when you above the Hawking page transition, this becomes a type three one. And, yeah. Okay. and so, uh, yeah, and the same statement applied to ML. So, so the story is the following. So the story is following, yeah, I, I tried to finish in a few minutes. Uh, so the story is it's following. So previously, we, uh, uh, we said that the operator, so the physics in the right region at the finite temperature can be described by the physics in the bulk in the right region, and the similarly uh, from the L. Within this algebraic language, is that the standard ABS-CFT dictionary tells you that this operator on the right are equivalent to the uh, operator in this right region of the black hole, and operating the left is equivalent to the right uh, left region of the black hole. So here, the operator including all time, okay, because the uh, different time uh, uh, operators are equivalent. And uh, uh, in particular, say say this identification means that the operator in the right region should be considered as operator in the right CFT. Okay, yeah, it's operating the right. CFT. So, so now, so this identification only give you this structure. So you have the identification of this boundary algebra with the right, uh, left region, and that is, this does not tell you whether this left and the right region of the black hole are connected. Okay. Uh, also, does not imply whether there's a future and the past region. Okay. And so such uh, such identification itself does not tell you that. So, so now the question is, how do we understand the times in the bulk gravity? So, 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 so let me just very quickly say, so you can formulate the question of the time, uh, this kind of cross cut time, say if it evolves into a lot of slides across the horizon, that become the question of finding the boundary automorphisms of the algebra, okay, the boundary theory algebra. Then the question is what kind of automorphism corresponding to the time, uh, the bulk time. So the claim, is that the uh, uh, the uh, the interior time standard the swatchel time in the in the right or left region just generated by the standard so this is what's called for, uh, modular flow as uh, the difference between the right Hamiltonian and the left Hamiltonian so this is the standard time that gives rise to the uh, uh, the the, uh, the swatchel time 
But then because of this emergent type 3 wide structure in the angle to infinity limit, now you have a real time come from this half sided modular structure. So this is this structure is specific to type 3 1. Okay. It's a bit, uh, three, three one. So that will generate your flow across the fly. And uh, 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 and uh, yeah. So uh, so let me just quickly say your picture. So when the T is greater than the Hawking page temperature, and then and, and then essentially using this half-sided modular flow, you can generate the future and the past region. But if you are below the Hawking temperature temperature, you are still in the type one, then in this case actually you get these two disconnected geometry. Okay, and then then the uh, excitations there they're connected by this one of the dots. Anyway, so uh, yeah, so you can actually uh, 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 calculate ex uh, uh, explicitly, uh, 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 and then you can construct this operator, uh, this unitary operator, which you can act say or operate in the right region, and then you can show explicitly that take you behind the right branch. Okay, yeah, let me just stop here. Yeah, yeah. Let me just say one thing, and, uh, and then you can show. Actually, you can construct this U. Then, they actually corresponding to the cross uh, uh law translation in the U direction. Uh, uh, just essentially, you see the emergence of the cross curve time uh, from this kind of U operator, which is specific to this type three one structure. Mm -hmm. We have written like a floating a few months ago, right? and he showed how in with see, in gravity, well, in any factory theory, mm -hmm. you have a modular operator, right? so the modular, you can define a modular flow. In gravity, that is a natural interpretation in the black hole, this is the Hamiltonian, the, the ADM mm -hmm. Hamiltonian. And with that, you can do a cross product and define a type two algebra. Right? Mm -hmm. um, so, these things, which the, is, you can describe not only the strict n equal to infinity limit, but actually the, the perturbative expansion of large n, you know, the asymptotically. So does this uh, um, uh, half-sided inclusion and uh, the unitary uh, group, the construction survive also for these type two theories when you do the cross product? Um, yeah, the answer is I don't know. Uh, so, so, so this cross product is actually rather subtle to define. Uh, so he actually defines it in two ways. So one is that you have to include all one open corrections, and in the formal series, <coughs> which we actually don't know whether that uh, kind of thing exists. So you have to include all one open corrections uh, 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 as a formal series, and then in that structure you can define this kind of cross product. To, to do it. And, uh, and that was his first paper. And then in the later paper, he actually went away from that. Uh, and then, then he considered the microcanonic ensemble. Uh, 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 the microcanonic ensemble is the energy restriction. And then there, you can define the cross product in the leading order uh, in, 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 in large n limits. Don't include any corrections. And including leading order, then you get the type 2 structure. Uh, when you take a cross product with that harmonic. But that geometry is actually not the standard geometry because when you restrict, say, say the standard geometry, the energy fluctuation uh, is always of order n. So in his state, the energy fluctuation is of order one. That means that the geometry fluctuates very largely. So his uh, construction is actually rather subtle. Uh, it does not correspond to this kind of geometry. But actually, do you understand why uh, this statement about the fact that you need one over n corrections? Because when I do a cross product, I need a modular flow, right? And uh, I mean, it, it seems that uh, I can do for any type three algebras that have a modular flow operator. Yeah, but 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 it's not exactly doing the modular flow. It's actually doing the uh, uh, cross product with this right Hamiltonian, and the right Hamiltonian you uh, you define with the n. So if you want to include this n, then you have to include all the series. Otherwise, you, uh, you, you, you can no longer define your algebra. So it's not like the, the h minus h? No, no, no. So you actually he has to use hr. Yeah. Can I ask a simple, a simple question? Yeah. So in general, we would say, OK, um, 
Bueno, se, el de Magazine Paper, a way to replace the paradox is you calculate the correlator, separate it time like, and then you see that the two point function falls off. Falls off. Basically, because the quasi normal knows it will not fall. With this new uh, G generator of uh, time translations, if I do the correlator of the two phi's, of that phi, but evolve with the proper Kruskal time, yeah. do the two point function falls off or this two point function might oscillate? Or we, it will also have the problem of information loss. Uh, oh yeah, you say yeah, yeah, because this is uh, uh, this is the leading order in that gen. Yeah, you certainly have information loss. You still think ah, yeah, so, yeah. so even if we have this notion of this time, uh, we still have information loss. Yeah, Oof. yeah, yeah. Information loss, you need to understand it uh, for finite. End. So so here is you understand the emergence of the geometry and the causal structure in the large end limit. And uh, so, so if you want to understand information loss, you have to go to finite. There are already many questions. Uh, so thanks all again. Okay.